Good morning and welcome to Trinity Parish. On this, our second Sunday, or actually it's the third Sunday after Pentecost. Our bulletin does not have the right date, but if you are worshiping with us at home, the bulletin is correct that you have in your uh, notes and comments or in the uh, option section of Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also Let us say together the colic for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to you. O Lord, your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will set you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to him trembling, came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. 
But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abin Adab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We'll read uh, Psalm 20 responsibly. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Send you help from his holy place. And strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings. And accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant your, you your heart's desire. And prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory. And triumph in the name of God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. We will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down. But we will rise and make our life. O Lord, give victory to the King. And answer us when we call. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces itself from the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, what can be compared, we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sowed upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord So today is Deacon Sunday. And we haven't had a deacon here in many years, apparently, at Trinity. So we'd like to welcome Deacon Bob Greiner, who is the deacon for Emmanuel in Boston. And he is going to be here today to uh, preach for us, to also be with us at Lemonade on the Lawn afterwards. And he'll be able to answer questions and uh, talk a little bit about the diaconate, which I assume he's going to do in his sermon with us today. So please welcome Deacon Bob. Well, thank you. Only about 90% of my sermon involves <laughs> the diaconate. Uh, let us pray. O oh God, whose other name is love, grant us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to seek always and everywhere after truth, come when it may, and cost what it will. Amen. So, good morning. As Kate just said, I'm a deacon and I'm serving at Emmanuel Church in Boston. Uh, and I'm very, very, very happy to hear you. Um, um, and I know if anyone can't hear me, just raise your hand and I'll speak a little louder, okay? So. I'm so pleased that our bishops have designated today as Deacon Sunday. I'm very pleased to have been asked to be here at Trinity Church Melrose. 
I'm grateful to Kate for asking me to be here and for her very warm welcome. Why Deacon Sunday? Well, there are over 180 churches and worshiping centers in our diocese. And there are hundreds of active priests and retired priests in our diocese. But there are only 35 active deacons. Ideally, then, we're about 130 deacons short. Deacons are one of the four orders in our church. Lay, deacons, priests, and bishops. All four orders are considered equal. But yes, we have a hierarchy that allows for good order and governance. But each of these four orders have specific ministry that really is not one better than the other. And yes, if you are not a deacon, priest, or bishop, you are in an order. The congregation this morning may not think of it in this way, but when you were baptized, you were ordained into the laity of the church. And so when you have a moment, please check out your baptismal covenant in your prayer book, pages 304 and 305, if you're good memory, memorizing numbers, and you will find there the charge that is given to all lay persons. But what about the word deacon? Deacon comes from the Greek, diakonos, which means servant. And we use this Greek English word because the New Testament primarily was written in Greek. And so many of the words that are in Greek have come to us in English as well. Deacon first appears in the book of Acts, chapter 6. And let me read a few verses. Now, during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists, that is Greek-speaking Christian Jews, complained against the Hebrews that their widows were being neglected in the distribution of bread. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, the apostles, will devote ourselves to prayer and serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community and had these seven men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them, end quote. And so deacons became an order. In the first century of the common era, each church was actually in a home, and each church had its own bishop, so to speak, as its shepherd. And then there weren't a lot of churches at that point, and so this was doable. So in the early church, Kate would be your bishop. But the bishops couldn't keep up as, ch as churches grew, so ordained folks, the deacons, would take the sacrament to folks at home, would take clothing that they need, and uh, food, and so forth. But the churches continued to grow, and so that just sort of didn't work any longer. And it was at that point that the order of the priesthood was developed. And so now we have, through the centuries, what we observe today. Kate is your priest, acting in place of the bishop, and ministering to this congregation, to this family. Around the 14th century, the number of deacons declined significantly in the Western Church and continued right up until the latter part of the last century. But then in the 1970s, those of us who were old enough to remember the exciting great liturgical reforms that began in the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican Council under Pope John XXIII, as well as what was happening in the Lutheran Church, in the Episcopal Church, and the Anglican Church. This is when the first women were ordained priests in 1974. 
Our current prayer book came in 1979, and the Order of Deacons was revived in the same year, 1979. And so in our church, many deacons, and probably the majority, are women. I have a couple of priest friends who are transgender, and so it is good news that there are increasing transgender deacons in our church. I'm what's called a vocational deacon or permanent deacon. If you know someone on the road to being ordained a priest, they will be ordained a deacon first, and then six months to a year later, they will become a priest. When Kate and I spent some time together this week, and in learning about Kate's background in the theater, we both commented that we view the liturgy in part as a sacred play. There is dialogue and movement. And so if you watch us this morning as deacon and priest, you will get the idea. Kate and I make our entrance onto the stage. Kate is the host, and I am servant at our banquet Eucharistic meal. I proclaim as deacon the word, the gospel. At this moment, I am preaching. Visually, my role as servant you will notice that my stole is over the left shoulder. This stole represents the first century towel that was similar to what Jesus used when he washed the disciples' feet on the Last Supper. And so this became a traditional vestment fitting the deacon as being in the servant role. And one of the ways you will see this is that I help set the table uh, with your lay Eucharistic minister to prepare for the banquet. And Kate, as priest and presider, presides over the meal. And then your Eucharistic minister and I will clean the table so that all is in order once the meal is over. So obviously, thank you very much to your altar guild. <laughs> Finally, at the end of the liturgy, I give a dismissal and dismissals are interesting because they're not goodbye, have a nice day, but it's really an encouragement to go out into the world, take everything that you've experienced at this Eucharist, what you heard in the gospel, what you might hear in the, in the uh, a sermon, in the announcements, in the prayers, and use that during the week. As a deacon, I can do more. I, I can serve at weddings. Uh, officiated weddings and funerals and baptisms. I will be officiating uh, at a wedding in a couple of months of a couple Christian and Jewish, and I'll be with our rabbi, um, and it'll be a wonderful experience. In a parish, the deacon assists in the work of the priest in charge. So here at Trinity, Kate, as your priest, serves to build up the body of Christ here in this parish. If you were to have a deacon, the deacon can assist to help your ministry beyond the parish, beyond this street. A priest cannot do everything. At the ordination of a deacon, the bishop reads the examination, which is part of the rite that's also in your prayer book. It reads in part, Deacons are called in the name of Jesus Christ to serve all people. We are called particularly as deacons to serve the poor and care for the sick and the ill and the powerless and the lonely. In addition, deacons are to interpret to the church the needs and concerns of the world. So deacons stand sort of one foot here in the church and the other one out on the street. This instruction to interpret the needs of the church is exactly what happened at the very beginning that I read earlier from Acts. Women, specifically widows, were going hungry. They were being ignored, but they spoke up and the community created deacons to solve that need. Sometimes in addition to the parish-based ministries, like your particular donations to St. Luke's in Chelsea, 
deacons serve in community settings separate from the parish. For example, some types of ministries, including helping to set up a food bank, helping to start a center for immigrants. One of our deacons has in the North Shore set up a safe space for women who are trying to flee from uh, being captive in the sex trade. It's called Dinah's House. Deacons help running grief, uh, grief groups, book clubs, chaplains, elder care. I have a close deacon who runs a pet, runs a pet companion ministry, and we all know how much uh, pets can mean to people. Um, and some deacons get into politics in the sense of working on school boards, just to name a few. Um, I was involved for a year at Samaritans, which here in Boston is a phone bank for those that are calling about the possibility of harming themselves. Perhaps one or more of you listening now is starting to think about something that you are doing that I may have not mentioned that may be a diaconal possibility. So many people are doing wonderful works of kindness. Perhaps you are doing something unique in here or watching online that could be refocused towards diaconal work, works of mercy in the name of the church. And there are larger issues that we all have grave concerns about, broken parts of our social system that cause so many people to be powerless, pushed to the edge of society. We need to continue to address the structural evil that are in so many places, whether the systems that need to be changed involve ridding our society of the evils of all the isms that are out there, or about wage equality, or speak to food availability, highlight access to health care, or address gun violence, or climate change, and the list could go on. The deacon's ministry is called upon to sing out about structural evils in the world and to work toward making changes when needed. But not alone. Deacons do not work alone. They, work, they are part of a parish family. But I want to mention that as mon monumental as this may sound from all the projects I've mentioned, a good motto um, that I learned at the cathedral where I was a member for many years, someone said, no one can do everything, but everybody can do something. And so know, knowing that deacons, for the most part, hold jobs because we are not paid for our work, there is a limited time to serve. And so the deacons really work in their respective areas for about 12 hours a week were not run ragged into the ground. So if, if you think you might be hearing voices, you just might be hearing voices. I had such a moment when something inside of me in 2012 said, I can do more. Listen to the Holy Spirit that might be churning up something inside you. If something resonates, talk to Kate or speak to me after the liturgy. Or also, there may be someone in the parish that you recognize, that person really sounds like a deacon to me, what he or she is doing. Talk to that person. They may not be aware of it. As we heard in today's gospel passage, perhaps there is a seed planted within you or someone you know, and it may be sprouting and growing, but you do not know how. So please, if you even think you may be hearing a call, let someone know. Talk with Kate or call one of us. We would welcome the opportunity. There is nothing as wonderful and meaningful as responding to God's call. I hope that if you want to say hi or have a question, I'd love to talk with you after the service. And Kate knows how to reach me. I love to talk on the phone.
Remember, if you are a nudge, a pest, a troublemaker, trust me, that sounds like you might be a deacon. Truly. Catherine Jefford Shorey, the former presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church and addressing deacons said, you are the nudges of the church. And being someone who can annoy people, I was so glad to hear her say that. <laughs> so after all, Jesus has no mind, no heart, no hands, no feet, but ours. We are the body of Christ, all of us, deacons, priests, bishops, and lay. So thank you for giving me the gift of talking to you this morning. Even if the diaconate does not resonate, I want you to remember that you and me, all of us, have been ordained by our baptisms into the sacred order of the laity. In our baptismal covenant, we have taken vows, called to be faithful to worship, and the sacraments to resist evil, proclaim the good news of God, and serve Christ and all persons, protect the environment, and strive for justice and peace, and to respect the dignity of every human person. So thank you for having me this morning, and amen. Let us stand and recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Creator and the Son. The Creator and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Alan and Gail, our bishops, for Kate, our rector, for Deacon Bob, who, is, who <laughs> preached today, for Michael, our seminarian, for the ministers in this parish, and for our lay ministers serving today. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Aidan's Chapel in Dartmouth, St. Peter's Church in Dartmouth, congregations, organists, choirs, and other church musicians, and the Society for the Companions of the Holy Cross. Dear God, and live in the church for its mission.
breathe fresh life into your people. We pray for the world. We pray for a rapid global response to the pandemic affecting areas where the virus continues to spread. We pray for peaceful solutions to the conflict with Israel and the Palestinians. Creator of all, lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace. Awaken in, in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care for the creatures. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. And all they have Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve one another in love as he loves us. We pray for those in need, praying especially for those on our prayer list. Hannah, Bob, Judith, Sharon, Joan, Jean, Ellen, Nancy, Louise, Lynn, Steve, Dan, Edward, Cynthia, Mike, Jack, Frank and our shut-in Gil. We pray also for those who we now name, silently, aloud, or in chat box or comments. God of hope, comfort, and God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We remember those who have died and those who mourn, especially Ellie Field and Chad Wright, in whose memory the altar flowers are lovingly given from Gil and Sherry Gouch. Please name others you know silently aloud or in the chat box or comment section. Loving God, into your hands we commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn. We pray for ourselves and our ministries, especially our redevelopment team. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the very end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to safely exchange the peace.
I wanted to uh, just make a couple announcements and I'll invite Emily to come up and mention a couple others if you feel up to doing that. We kind of put her on the spot as the best member of the day makes announcements. So, uh, and we didn't get to catch up on that. Um, I just want to make sure that if you're new, that you sign up on our newsletter, um, which is online on our website, especially if you're joining us digitally, um, joining us in worship this morning from home. Um, and you're new, please sign up online. On, the link is on our website. And also, we have these nifty new uh, cards in the pews. You might see them. They have a QCR code on them. So if you're somebody who isn't in the habit of pledging or you want to make a weekly donation when you're here, you can simply point your phone at that and take a picture, and then you'll be directed to the website to do online giving. So we're really grateful we have that kind of technology now. And um, we're going to continue with our guidelines for safety probably through the month of June. And then we'll, we'll be waiting for our bishop's new guidelines for what we'll be doing next. So thank everybody for uh, that cooperation with masking, safe distancing. At communion, we will be having communion at the rail now. The ushers, uh, greeters will release you one pew at a time from the front. And you'll come up here from the side. And, and we're just going to space along the rail here. And then you can uh, go exit down the center aisle. Okay, so come up the side, exit down the center. Okay, and uh, we'll be receiving in one kind today. We will not be doing the chalice. So uh, I'll be dropping it into your hand. You can remove your mask and, and receive it at the rail, or you can take it back to your pew, whichever you choose. So. At this time, I would like to also invite Emily up to be with us and to please keep in Grazia Monson in your prayers. Um, I got word from Sarah that she's, um, she's dying right now. So please keep her in your prayers. I'm sure they would appreciate cards uh, for her. So thank you. Um, I wanted to say thank you to our guest preacher today. And also, can you hold, hold the microphone? Okay, sorry. Um, I wanted to say thank you to our guest preacher today. Um, also, to provide an update that the redevelopment team has been continuing to meet and has been having fruitful discussions. Um, to also relay a prayer uh, from Ellen Durgis um, regarding her mother and long term parishioner Louise Kelly. Um, that uh, her mother's cancer has progressed, and so special prayers are are welcome. I don't know if people are saying they can't hear me, or okay, okay, all right, um, okay. Uh, Reverend Kate is also available for pastoral care to help uh, parishioners with life transitions, uh, grieving, other issues that are ongoing. And um, also an update from Hannah Nieswanger uh, about the work uh, in Chelsea in terms of helping our neighbors there. Um, it also sounds like she uh, is unable to continue with the food um, deliveries for the next few months, but uh, to do what we can to help with uh, furthering that mission. Yes, so if you have been donating for Chelsea with groceries, Hannah's no longer able to take them downtown to or down to Chelsea. So um, there are in the bulletin in the newsletter, if you want to continue donating through the summer, you can take it to Belmont or Winchester, and you can contact Hannah for that information about how to do that. So, um, so if anybody wants to be somebody who picks up and, and does a kind of diaconal role uh, and takes groceries down and our donations down to our ministry in St. Luke's in Chelsea, you would certainly be most welcome and contact me and let us know. Um, any other announcement? Oh, you know, I do have one announcement we didn't get in the bulletin is Kathleen is now having walks on Thursdays. Do you want to talk about that real quick? Hi, I'm Kathleen. I'm one of the wardens. For the past year or so, we've been doing um, Compline on Thursday evenings. But to me, especially the night owl that I am, it seems a little funny to be saying basically good night when the sun is still up. 
So I thought during the summer months, while it's nice and warm and light out, that we could maybe gather at the church on Thursday instead of Compline and just go for a little walk around our neighborhood, see what we see, have a little chat, um, get some steps in. We'll have a, a triple threat there. So uh, Thursday, 7.30. And my favorite part of our announcement is that if you feel so moved, you may buy her gelato. <laughs> <laughs> from, from our wonderful neighbors across the street who now have ice cream. Walk in love as Christ loved you. Bring offerings and come into his courts. <laughs> We'll continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is in your bulletin. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, 
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, to his, and, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of Christ of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To you and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, be with you, in you, and remain always among us. Amen. Amen.